Hi, um, my name is Dennis Yoon, and I guess I'll be starting the uh, GA for GH group of talks. Um, we're part of the containers and workflows task team. So left to right, um, uh, I'm Dennis Yoon out of the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research in Toronto. Um, Brian O'Connor will be presenting both his slides and Kyle Arat's slides from the UCSC and the OHSU in uh, the US. And Peter Anstutz will be presenting for Kiraverse. Um, so I'm going to define this right off so I don't have to keep on saying this really long acronym. The Global Alliance for Genomics and Health. Uh, you can read the slogan up there. Uh, but for our purposes, we're part of the Containers and Workflows task team under the Data Working Group. And our particular task that we're collaborating on is to try to create APIs that enable us to collaborate and um, run and share workflows that run reproducibly in a variety of environments. Um, so we're going to be covering a bunch of APIs. Um, what we're going to start off with is the tool registry service and DocStore, which recently marked one year in uh, production. Um, so, sorry, just give me a sec. Sorry, I skipped the slide. Um, so the four APIs that we'll be um, addressing as a part of our team will be uh, the tool registry service, or TERS, which distributes and shares tools and workflows. There's the workflow execution service, or WES, which executes at a high level workflows. Those workflows are broken down into individual tasks, which are run by TESS, or the task execution service, um, individual tasks being run within environments such as AWS or um, Google Cloud. And last but not least, the data object service, which stores the actual data, um, also within environments such as AWS or Google Cloud. And these APIs were sort of born out of our experience in various large-scale uh, genomic sequencing projects. Um, so sorry, skipped through this one. So the first service, uh, starting from the top, would be the tool registry service. Um, our idea here was to try to create a way to share Docker-based tools and workflows described using languages such as CWL or WIDL. Um, there's a schema release that you can either hit up using that URL or the QR code on the bottom right. Um, the idea is we wanted to sort of exchange ideas with like-minded groups. And at the moment, we have a simple reference implementation, implementation and a full-featured docstore.org implementation. Um, also, Bausch and Doc has implemented an early version of this particular schema. Uh, but what is this? Well, it's probably best to jump into what docstore is to give an example of a particular implementation of the tool registry service. So for docstore, uh, we wanted to create a resource that when we started the PCOG project or the pan cancer and analysis of home whole genome um, project, this was a project to analyze 2,800 um, genomes using a variety of pre and post processing steps, as well as three main uh, variant calling workflows. Um, the basic inspiration that we took was from the process of people putting out open source code and demonstrating that it works within a continuous integration environment, such as Travis or Jenkins. So the idea was taking that a step further, you would try to put a Docker file in an environment such as Docker Hub or Quay.io, pulling in that open source code and demonstrating that not only does your code compile and run for you, but you can build this distributable image for someone else in a publicly available environment. So that solves the problem of not just it compiles for me, but it also builds the image for me. Next, you add a descriptor in some sort of programmatic format to that Docker image, and that gives you a tool on DocStore. And that answers the question of what is this thing in the first place if someone comes across your tool. And last but not least, you can also add a parameterization file on DocStore. And the idea is this answers the question of, does this actually run for me? And hopefully this runs for someone else. And the idea is that you can build up from first principles all the way from your open source code to your Docker file, to your tool on DocStore, and actually running the thing. So just to reiterate, in year one, the core feature that we created was the ability to register your Docker-based tools or workflows. 
And recently, we added features such as um, launch with. We added DNA Stack as a launch with partner for Widdle based workflows. We added the ability to draw data from sources such as GitLab or Bitbucket in addition to GitHub. We added the ability to add workflows through an API as well as user friendliness things such as being able to bookmark individual tools, use file provisioning plugins, having better errors coming back to the user, and another user friendliness thing is documentation. We added tutorials um, on how to run stuff within AWS Batch and Azure Batch um, QR code again. Um, but are we wrong? Well, we're probably wrong for some use cases. We're only a particularly small team, and most of our expertise is within public and private clouds. So you may have a different security model. You may have a different language or maybe something that's not Docker. Um, so maybe there's a singularity store out there. Um, so our hope is that you can join with us for the tool registry service, exchange some high-level met metadata to allow us to exchange information to allow us to allow users to find your tools and hopefully preserve your particular process. Um, today, you can log on to DocStore and exchange your workflows and tools. In a near future, we're hoping that you'll both find your tools run in a variety of different repositories with different kinds of focus on a variety of different platforms. And as we're actually running those things, I'm going to be handing this off to Brian O'Connor, who will be talking about tests and the implementation funnel.